Well, it's a travel day. I am leaving today for Toronto to go and rack and stack this server for Jupiter Broadcasting. And we're meeting Chris in Toronto in a few hours, along with a friend of ours who's helping us do the build out in the DC, who you'll meet throughout the rest of this video. It's been a long road to get here. I've just checked my bag and got a, a gentle feeling up by TSA as I went through. Uh, random screening, of course. Um, but I had to check the bag with six, eight hard drives in it. So there are four 14 terabyte drives in there, along with a handful of disks that I'm gonna use for my offsite remote backup uh, purposes. Because my fiber's coming in on Saturday. AT&T finally emailed me telling me that uh, my fiber's gonna be here at last, so that's good. Um, but yeah, I had to pack a checked bag with server rails because it didn't fit in the box that I mailed the server in. Uh, yeah, server rails and a bunch of hard drives. So anyway, let's hope it's a smooth flight. Midday departure, which is very nice. And so far, the Raleigh airport is basically a ghost town, which is always a nice treat. So see you in Toronto. We are on our way to the data center. It's the next morning, and I found a couple of people at the airport. Well, found Chris at the airport. That's true. You, you can say hello, by the oh, way. Oh, hi. Uh, you, you guys can talk, right? Hi. What, what's that all about? <laughs> we, we had a poutine on the uh, on the way up, Chris, at McDonald's. Of all I was going to say, you got to disclose. It was McDonald's. <laughs> oh, the cheese doesn't I even melt. I cannot believe you did that. Yeah, but it's got gravy. We're getting the absolute best stuff here. What's the, have you had any yet? Yeah, it's um, so what they do is they put a gravy on it <laughs> and then like these gelatinous chunks of white plastic that I think are supposed to represent cheese, which I'm pretty sure is the Canadian standard. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure this is representative, so I'm going to go ahead and give it a go. The gravy's good. The cheese curds were a bit like halloumi. They were like um, squeaky. They, yeah. they need to be squeaky. That's good. Oh, no, I want it melting. But they were they were rubbery and oh. like... Oh, so we have a poutine dispute already, I can see. Yeah. Here. So we're on our way to the data center to rack and stack the uh, the server, I guess. We've got a bunch of stuff to do today. Um, figure out how server rails work. I, I don't know. Have you ever racked a piece of real server gear, either of you? What, you mean they have rails? Yeah. Well, I thought they just floated in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A uh, bunch of networking stuff to configure, probably some tail scale stuff too, and then... Oh, some hard drives. And then I think after that, we're largely done. <laughs> and then what? <laughs> yeah, maybe then we go to lunch. Next time I speak to you, we'll be in the data center. Ta-da, we've made it. Look, there's a server rack and everything. The uh, Jupiter broadcasting server is sat over. There's a, there's a little Chris Fisher hiding over there in the corner. But yeah, the HL15 is here. It made it safely from Raleigh, which is nice. And then the Pi KVM also just did its thing. We uh, we wanted to uh, just figure out how to turn it on and off, so I just jumped straight onto the yeah. tail net, and the Pi KVM showed right up. So this is the room we're going to be in, and there's a bunch of power in the rack, all ready to go. What is going on? That's just a space. That's oh yeah, these that's screens are pretty cool. That's just something else. Oh, so, the touch screen. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So you can look at the metrics of what's going on on a specific it's switch. Ridiculous. It's ridiculous. The multi-touch. Back in oh, my day, you had to use a comm cable. My watch can't even do that. It does an A, it does an A, AR overlay. So what are we looking at here, Steven? So you can be really nerdy and you can use AR to show you what ports are connected to what. So this is an app from Unify that you install on your phone and then it just tells you which port goes where? Yeah. How cool is that? So yeah, this, this room's been nicely put together. Um, we, we're taking a few rack units from Steven over here in the corner, who's setting up a, an MSP business. And we do, there's a bunch of offsite backups for his clients here in this rack. And well, I guess the front door's locked. You can see there's a couple of 45 drive servers in there, UPSs, Unified gear, all that kind of stuff. So we're just going to take a few rack units at the top here 
for our HL15. Yeah, that would really seal it. Now I think we've got some fans to install in this bad boy, which looks like it made the journey just fine. I love that. I don't see any dents or... Oh, I could put one. Yeah? Go on then. Hulk mode. <laughs> Thanks, Brent. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's get on with uh, what we're here for, hey? Hello? Alex is doing a good job, everybody. <laughs> so we're on the workbench, the server room's next door, and... We have a bunch of fans to install in this thing because the stock fans that ship with the HL15 are the loudest thing in that server room. So it's not an LTT screwdriver, which I'm quite partial to. Uh, it's a Weera, which I know are quite a bit better. So I'm just gonna start by undoing these screws in the front, I reckon. By including the three on the bottom too. Mm -hmm. It just falls forward once you take out all the screws. Quality. Because all the old computers had like thunkers. Oh, look at that. Oh, including some of the bugs from Alex's basement. <laughs> Seriously. I've got the front off the server and I found a couple of bugs in the system. Maybe the six months it's been in my basement. So yeah, we've just pulled the front off the server, as you can see, and we're gonna just undo the fans and swap the fans out on the front. Should be fairly straightforward. They're all just connected with three pin cables, they're not even PWN cables. So aye, aye, aye. When yes. you buy their whole kit, they come with a whole new interface for it on the side, so that it actually can do PWM, but... Complete with a little 3D printed dog bone yeah. connector thing. It's more, of a, it's more of a cable management thing. Once you open up that, all the cables are down. Oh, okay. I can dig that. Mm -hmm. Is this been 3D printed too? Yeah. Yeah. There's a bunch of 3D printed parts, and then if you break them, they offer the files, I think, online. Yeah. So there you go. German engineer. Do we have a cloth to give it a quick wipe whilst it's... Uh... There you go. I could find something for it. That's what the belly's for, buddy. Why else have that real estate <laughs> on the shirt? There you go. Problem solved. It's clean. Wow, that's heavy. Yeah, it's a respectable piece of metal. Wow. Well, that's like this, a third of the weight of the server is just in this front seat. So these have... Huh. I, those fans probably also come with the rubber grommets, right? They're not to us. Yeah, because these have those little, if we need them. Premium fans. So what I do is I take one of these screws and I feed it through these holes first. So that way you're not trying to make new threads when you're trying to put that on. You can <clears> actually put them in square so that you don't end up with one on the angle. It's a good tip. Do you need this? Mm. How do you get it all the way? Wait, I'm not fine. It's okay. You'll see. We'll get there. Oh, you're like pre-threaded. Right? Uh -huh. Hello. Hello. So what do we have here, Brent? Well, it's a, it's a, it's a, uh, it's a fan. Oh, it's a, it's a fan. I think it's a directional fan. Only fans? Oh. Only fans. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Noctua NF A 1225 These are some high-end fans, Stephen. Oh. Did you say Hawk Tour? <laughs> Did not say Hawk Tour, no. What about these? <laughs> Noctua. What about these? Brent, you filthy yeah. man. <laughs> so what side were you screwing? The non oh, side? I'm breaking it. Yeah, so the sticker side is These are really, outer. really high quality fans. And, so and so it's, kind of it's got a couple so of arrows so we know the directional airflow. Like so this. we want to mount it this way. Small details. Yeah. yeah. So we want to chase the like, threads on like, the fan like on the right, like that. side that's going to screw, which is the front side. Great. So. What are you doing here, Stephen? So I hate trying to thread these holes by hand. And I also hate when it goes in sideways and then people notice that. So if you just pre-thread them, then when you actually install them, everything just goes in really easy. Yeah. Oh, you want to try? Give it a shot. I want you. This way? Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. These are those Milwaukee 12 volt, aren't they? Do you like them? Yeah. I mean, for everything I do, they're great. The bigger ones, you'd probably snap right through the plastic. <laughs> Hmm. I mean, like, they all have lower settings, but, like, I have no need for the really heavy battery. These all drilled out? Yeah. Oh, Brent's doing it by hand. You want to race? Well done, Brent. Well, that just lifts right out, huh? That's pretty nice. It's nice. Slight. When you see this here, that's all where all the wires are behind right there. It's pretty well done. Nice cable management, a little 3D printed piece for that. And it all comes back to this. Plugs right in. Boop, boop, boop. Runs power to each one. 
only real downside to this case is that if you want to put in a long GPU, mm -hmm. you almost have to take this out because mm -hmm. you won't be able to. Mm -hmm. So the GPU will fit sure. underneath it, but this has to come out in time in order to put it. Yeah, I'm missing it. And these are 3D printed. Aha, now I'm seeing more 3D printed stuff. Interesting. Concealer. What a freaking cool future we live in. Replicated parts more and more. I think <clears throat> highlights what a small production run this must have been. Though. Yeah, yeah. Like you, you couldn't seriously have three right. D printed ten thousand of these. Right. Mm -mm. It does give that away. Five hundred, maybe. Yeah, and you could start printing them ahead of time. I suppose you could ramp up a little bit. I don't know how big each part. Oh, right, there you go. So each part yeah. takes up seven bays. Yeah. Okay. So they've got. I must, they must have a single mm -hmm. zone in the middle, mm -hmm. and then two sevens. Hmm. It's interesting as well because like the LSI controllers connected for the SATA and SAS backplane, each of these ports does four, it's a breakout, so it's one to four. So then I was trying to work out before we shipped it where the 15th drive connects. So one of these ports must do six, hmm. six drives and it must just be wasted, which is a bit weird. It is. So if you were to buy this just as a bare chassis with the backplane, Nine hundred. No, but that's that's just that's what I'm saying. It's like at that point I expect. I don't know. Hold on, hold on. Yeah. It is solid, but... Yeah, it's it. It's, this reminds me. I think I said this in my original review of, of fractal cases of like ten years ago. Like the, the very first defined case has super thick steel like this, and over the years they've reduced <laughs> it. And it becomes more and more flimsy because most people don't care about that kind of thing, mm -hmm. particularly at the price point fractal is trying to hit. Mm -hmm. But I almost wish that companies like Fractal would make two tiers of product, one for like the mass market, and then I know I know you've got double the tooling and everything. Can we do that? But if you're curious, it will key itself. Like you can see the little rails yeah. on the connector. Yeah. So we'll just use the three that are required, and then the RPM cable just does not connect it, so it'll just be on. All right. Oh, me. There we go. Warp speed. Warp speed. Yeah. So we just don't care about the other pin. You're usually doing this all by yourself, Alex. Yeah, this is way better. It's faster, yeah. Slays. More hands. Quick work. It's also just fun to hang yeah. out with your buddies. And you. completely. Like, I could have done all this in Raleigh before I sent it, but I'm actually kind of glad we are here doing this together. I agree. There you go. I think we go, did Chris. okay, Chris. Yeah. That's perfectly fine. You've, you've tucked them all up. I'm a tucker, but, you know, they could over time slip out. But I doubt it, honestly. The way that they're in there. I think they're fine. There you go. You swap pants. And they're all the right way. That's even a bonus. Yay! Good job, Brent. Uh, is there anything else you want to do while this is open? Drives. Uh, yeah. Probably want to install the hard drives. I would I would suggest personally that you rack it without the hard drive in it. Oh yeah? Okay. For weight purposes? Or it, well it will get heavy when yeah. you stuff that main drive. But not only that, we should probably install the rails that go on the outside of this thing. Yeah. And we move it around and stuff while we're doing that. They're basically just giant draw slides, huh? They are, and they should be laid left and right. Alex, you've never racked a server before? Genuinely never racked a server. I mean, I built my rack out of wood and I just pop it on a shelf. Yeah. It's, it's well, if it makes you feel better, I've done hundreds of them and I've probably forgotten completely how to do it, so. All right, well, so what do we what do we start with? So this is two pieces. Okay, so there's a little lever somewhere where we put it out then. Right. And so you have like these that will allow it once it locks. Okay, so that's how you pull the server in and out. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Right, makes sense. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Oh, it's secret. Whoa. Okay, we would have not found that. Yeah. We'll pull the latch so you can yeah, okay. it. Yeah. And now we're going to the computer store. <laughs> <laughs> Genuine thumbnail. Oh my. Gross. There you go. All right, so there's a couple of like nubbins I've noticed on here, which are sort of, I don't know, sprung? I think is the correct way to put it. Yeah. Uh, it says step one push on here. It says step one push, step two press down. So my assumption is I shove it in, in here somehow. I'd suggest pushing them into the back. 
Now, in terms of the server, it's a four U four rack units tall. Yeah, so we're gonna to have to go in the middle of two U. The middle of two so or the sorry, the middle of the four. So like one, two, three, four, and the middle, so the middle two. Okay. How do I know if it's the top middle or the bottom middle? Because well, it's not really divisible by I, I don't disagree with you. So we're gonna cheat and we're gonna pull mine out. We just figure out, like, we started at 19, so then 20, 21, 22 is what the server's going to take up. So then this is how it ends up working. So when you push those in, there's going to be little hooks that end up holding in on the actual rack itself. Oh, I see. So they, they line up with these hooks yeah. on the rail just here. Yeah, so you'll, it's going to click in and then drop. Gotcha. And then we're going to secure it down with some of that hardware that came in there so mm -hmm. that these don't back themselves out when you pull the server out. Okay. Everything comes crashing down. Well, that seems easy enough. Let's see if, in practice, it's as easy as it never will, never is. Never is. It's fine. All right, so one, two, three, four. And there must be one rack unit down in the middle. So the middle of thirty-three. The middle of thirty-three. Okay. Yeah. You can do yours because it extends, right? So just do one side, get it sorted, and then we'll push it in. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, easy enough. From the back. Basically the same thing. Yeah, yeah but I'm going to try it before I try it for it on Are we ready? We are not ready. I got a server right here. Oh, yeah, put it on the train. You're going to be holding it for a little bit. <laughs> okay. Like that. I have to be able to slide forward. Okay, so this is the arse. So it goes this way now. This is the front. You get it right? Right, so we want to be in the middle of 33 on the top. So okay. Down one. All right. So there's a, there are some hooks. And it's actually the hooks that want to go. Yeah. So, oh. You got it hooked? Okay, because I need to extend my side once you got it hooked. That's hooked. Good job. Okay, now we got to extend over here a little bit. Give me a little bit of a juice there, Alex. Extend it for me, you know. Give me your juice. Okay, uh, is that right? Yeah. Right uh, there? Yeah, a little okay. more, a little more. Give that. Push. Okay. Just haven't clicked, but we're in. We're in, we just haven't clicked. What if we pop it? Give it a good pop. Yeah, you gotta pop it. Can you give it a pop? Give it a pop, Alex. Give it a... No, I did my side. There we go. Is that right? Yes. That looks good. 33. How perfect is that? In the middle of 33. So there are a couple of screw holes here which attach the rails to the rack itself. At the moment, it's just sort of pressure fit with these spring-loaded clips. <laughs> so we're just going to screw the rails into the rack next. Okay. Now, over here, move towards me. Mm -hmm. Okay, move forward. Keep moving forward. Okay, so on the side, there's a little... Yeah. Push it one way, that it'll only go one way. Yeah. Like a glove. There you go. Yeah, there you go. Well, we can just go home now, right? Yep. All done. Job done. Right, so it's time. Now we have the server actually in the rack. I'm going to just install the Pi KVM into the back of the HL15. So this, I, I modeled this in uh, Fusion 360, and it's got a couple of screws in the back here, which are just normal fan screws that bite into the plastic. And it's going to screw into these two holes here in the back of the chassis. So. That's what I'm going to do next. And so there we go, the Pi KVM is now installed on the back of the server. I think we might be ready to put some storage in the front. I think it's about time we did some storage. <coughs> right, Chris, we have some hard drives here for you. All right, see you later, Alex. Well, not much good out there. They have to go in here. <laughs> oh, I thought they were for me. Oh, 14 oh. terabytes. All right, so let's just slide this out. Now, um, you want to look, try and look down inside a little bit yeah. to get a feel for... So they go like this, right? Just... No. <laughs> Don't bash them. Just like this. All right, I'm going to put number one in there. You ready? Here we go. It doesn't fit. It's a tight squeeze. No, it doesn't fit, Alex. So tight squeeze. Okay, I think it's in. I'm gonna press, are you ready? I'm pressing down. 
I think that's it. I think she's in. Number one is in. That is pretty exciting. So we're separating by 10 and 14. So we have 14 over here, 14 terabytes and 10 terabytes and they're gonna meet in the middle. Doesn't fit. This one doesn't fit. Oh, it's a 14er. 14 terabytes in your hand. Another 14 terabyte. What do you make of the dry sweats and the tool is maybe? Yeah, that's actually really nice. It is a tight fit, but that's what you want, right? So. Yeah, it's just a leap of faith when you actually have to yeah, I keep, shove it down. I keep checking, it. like it just looks a little off. But. Is it not fitting, Chris? No, it just doesn't fit. Okay, is that all of them? Would you say it doesn't fit? <laughs> <laughs> we have spares, are we putting the spares in? Okay. You have two additional 10 terabyte drives that you need in the end. All right. This is the only one that has tape on it, so it threw me off. So I'm peeling the spare sticker off? Yeah. No, this one doesn't fit. It's really weird. <laughs> it's like, oh. <laughs> actually it's not fitting. <laughs> there we go. It right there. Okay. Oh, we don't need any cables. Those are all spare parts. We'll be fine. This should be good. Hey, Chris, they don't fit. No, I know. We're having a new <laughs> chassis. Yeah. Nice, huh? No, they have different holes. That's what she said. There you go. You're getting it. I don't know. I have to find another the APs and the management and the yeah. PDUs for all that. Like, I can see just having a small scale version of this. Oh, the PDU is amazing. Yeah. You can see per socket yeah. usage. And I can see replacing the router. <coughs> I don't know. I've always thought about doing an Xbox for the router, but that looks pretty sweet. There's a limitation of what you can do for VPNs in, in the Unified routers. You can do WireGuard. Sure. Um, but other things aren't necessarily built in, and so a lot of people would complain. Those can go down. Hmm. Why would you want a tail scale on the router? Well, because it can be like your way in if your other stuff fails, right? So. But that sort of defeats the purpose of having every node and with its own IP on their mesh network. Yes. Different strokes of different folks. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, I'm just saying, some people complain that they can't do certain things that you might be able to do on like PSNs and stuff. You mean me? So like they might use a VPN. But anyway, uh, but since you're using TailScale, you yeah. don't really care what's on there anyway, yeah. I find. <clears throat> and I'm not really doing any super complicated routing features. Yeah. So I've just never really got yeah. the limitations of the. I think I wouldn't either. I'm using a stock router right now. <laughs> Time for some cable management now, I think, which is going to be a very interesting process. I am certain of that. <clears throat> so the Pi KVM is probably the most difficult part, and that's already done. So, right, how do you want me to manage the cables that don't leave the server itself? As in all of the Pi KVM stuff. So I kind of purposely did the location of your server so that you could just stuff it down here. Okay, yeah, I'm fine with that. Um, because I kind of knew that that was going to happen, so even if we pull it out, they'll never really get caught on anything. We just, ha I have to be careful when I push it back in, but even then, there's quite a bit of space yeah. here. Yeah, yeah. But that was the cleanest way to do that, because there's no real good way of managing that, and I don't want to block the airflow, so I'd rather it just... Anyway. How best to manage power cables? So, yeah. Power cables, what I end up doing is I just, I take the loop and I allow the loops to go down and I come back. Okay. And then you can choose whatever kind of works best. I my news, right? Quick interjection in the middle of the video. Brent just informed me that it's our editor Drew's birthday today. Happy birthday, Drew, for watching. <laughs> We're getting close to power up time, folks. We are just looking for the final, you know, like the kettle lead that goes into the, uh, the power supply, that's a proper name, but I always refer to them as kettle leads. Uh, I think we're ready for the big power on moment. Chris, come over here. <laughs> Your time to shine has come. Push the button. On the back of the power supply. <laughs> Wait, it's over here. Well, the power supply's turned off. Because oh. it auto powers on. Well, that's good, it lights up. Good job, boys. Did all six fans spin? Because this is the first time we've tested the fans. I see five, though. Well. Yeah, that's spinning. Five's not bad. Now it's lunchtime. <laughs> That's great, guys. That's a lot quieter too. We we don't. We also don't have any network connected. Stephen, 
Oh, it's so beautifully quiet, actually. We need an SFP plus and uh, Ethernet, please, for the IPMI. I am very impressed with the noise level. <laughs> the last cable to go in is the IPMI port for the motherboard. So we have the, the uh, Raspberry Pi here doing Pi KVM duties. But also, this motherboard has built-in KVM via, uh, via the Supermicro IPMI interface. So, I'm just going to plug that right into the network right down here. Okay, so we finished wiring the back of the server. We've got these two purple lines here, which are going to be our IPMI lines. So they go into this switch here, which are on a dedicated management VLAN for us. And then the main data line is this SFP plus DAC cable that's coming down into this unified switch over here on a separate VLAN. So the management of the server is on a completely separate network from the actual server itself. PyKVM is giving us redundancy on the IPMI side of things and pretty much the rest of the server I think is good to go. So let's go and jump over to my laptop and see if things are booted. Let's refresh this page. Yeah, there we go. So we have Moose Honk, <laughs> Moose Honk HL15 and also the PyKVM looks like it's come up on Tailscale too. So let's just log in and see what the terminal, the console of the virtu of the uh, HL15 is showing us. Yeah, looks good. So I'm going to do this through PyKVM and just do an FDisk minus L. Goodness me, that's a lot. So I'm going to use Inksy minus D. Okay, Inksy isn't installed. Okay, Inksy is now installed. So I do an Inksy minus XD. This is going to show us all the different drives attached. So we have one, two, three, four, 14 terabyte drives and six. Fantastic. We have six 10 terabyte drives showing up. So in addition to our two U.2 um, NVMe SSDs, the Intel ones, and our two Samsung boot drives, everything's showing up just fine. So that's fantastic. Right, from a racking and stacking perspective, I think we're all done. All the drives show up. Good job, gentlemen. In the first try. You first know, try. And they yeah. didn't always necessarily fit. I had a really, you know, <laughs> like a pile drive. <laughs> yeah, we made it look easy. We even got the server in on the rails the first time. So the finished product is up here. You have to, obviously, you have to, have to put the lid on. It's but, so handsome. But otherwise, yeah, I think we're pretty much done. Is it, is it lunchtime yet? Yeah. Oh, it's an earned lunchtime. And I think you owe us poutine. I do, because you're still on West Coast time, so even though it's 9 a.m. right now. It's breakfast. Breakfast poutine. Breakfast poutine. Uh-huh. <laughs> Winning Canada. Well, good job, gents. And there we are. We've racked and stacked the uh, new Jupiter Broadcasting off-site server. Yay!